Right. Hello everybody, my name is Trumpmaker and this is the War Game Cup round of 1,200, 1,400 people. We'll just call it round one. And this is a rarity. It's a match where it's pack player versus pack player. And of course, statistically packed are the least represented in the tournament. So this is kind of an oddity. And it's between uh, Comrade Jesus and Chris. So, let's check out what these loaders look like. We got some armored recon, sit drops, more recon. Looks like a lot of BMP, which are your anti infantry unit with a little bit of rocket power. Some tanks. These are all cheap units, by the way. I'm really favoring a lot of the sit drops. And we'll go quickly over to Blue, is Chris. And he's got, uh, looks like some, a lot of, ooh, a lot of artillery. That's about, what, a thousand points in artillery. A few helicopters, and a T-80 DB tank. So let the game to begin. Now, clearly Chris is opting for some sort of all-in play. And from Comrade Jesus, we have a very, very, very high amount of infantry. It's got anti-aircraft, tons of them. It's gonna feel very good, very, very good about all these stroops and whatnot, because there are so many gunships here. This wasn't planned, it was a guess. This is a very expensive tanks. They're running right to the middle, right to the rockets, and they're getting smashed down at the bridge. to retreat. We have a lot of artillery fire smashing off from these MSTAs. Now, Chris is not exactly a high-rated player, but Jesus is. He is very quickly spreading out his units, trying not to get smashed into this fire. He does have UAZ here, which is a risk. The UAZ, of course, is not armored, so it can die very easily. But Comrade Jesus has a very solid lead because of the kills of his main battle tank. So far, this Artillery fire has not proved to be quite that successful. The FOB will be drained out very, very quickly. And once this FOB drains out, that's it, man. That's all that she wrote. There's not much hope for him if that FOB drains out. And as long as he continues doing this massive amounts of fire, which is doing a little bit of damage, but not a lot, he's in trouble. The PT artifact is going to pick off this T-80 B tank, which is firing back, but it currently has a stabilization malfunction for 100 seconds on fortunate and we have some helicopters coming up this flank chewing through trying to take it wherever they can looks like they're going for the PTR flags but two of them get shot down never mind just one as they move back into position there goes another one and they zoom in and out as they try to retreat from the battlefield so far it is definitely a game to be comrade Jesus we have the T-80B moving back up, trying to get into position to try and do some sort of damage. This is, of course, a very heavy armored tank that can do a lot of damage. It is a mega tank, and it's blowing through the forest, trying to take it what it can. Looks like it got a Prisakazila anti-aircraft unit, and it's going for the Stroop. These are all the anti-aircraft units. If we can neutralize enough of them, his air units will be quite effective. We have some T-64 BB tanks moving in to take up the T-80, and we also have a, a rain of artillery hitting the woods, but there's no units right now. They're also smashing in the back here. This, of course, is the primary spot, but as we know from the vision, Chris has no idea it's even there. So he's refueling up. Oh, he's refueled with his... Wait a minute. He doesn't have anything left. All he really has left are these four artillery pieces. Whereas Comrade Jesus has taken control of the map, and I like to take this time to note. Standardized positioning. If you have two positions, it's Foxtrot and Golf. If you're on the defensive, it's Foxtrot and India. If you're only taking one, it's Foxtrot. This position back here is not a good position. Unless you're doing some kind of wonky play like this, what we call an all-in. Currently, he's going for a pretty big turtle. He's pumping out small bits of infantry, and that's really all he can afford. And we see, oh my god, the transport helicopters are coming in for Comrade Jesus. Might as well put in the fly the Valkyries. They're gonna land, probably drop in the woods here, and move to cut off any reinforcements from this location. This is another fairly standardized tactic for playing. Plant troops along the 
reinforcement line, and then the enemy cannot get any reinforcements. And you do it with little things like this. A VDV might be perfect because it has rocket launchers for vehicles, it has grenades for infantry, and it of course has the AK-47s. Is it AK-47? Yeah, AK-74, my bad. Uh, to deal with just, you know, other forms of fire. So we can see he's actually taken India. Very strong conflicts there. And he can probably take Delta as well. He's got to form a little bit more of a frontal position right here to take Delta. But Comrade Jesus showing he will not fall for the all-in. And he will survive. Moving forward. Looks like this has been spotted. We have the artillery blasting away. The VDVs are going down. You just gonna be able to keep this group too here. This one is most definitely dead. Unfortunately for Chris, the FOB is mostly drained out. Over here we see four T813 tanks popping out. Those are very, very expensive. Kind of shows the macro that he has going. Also, we have some uh, MI-28 Havocs coming here. And there's no real anti-air here to deal with this. So once he finds stuff, he will be killing stuff. And he's going straight for the infantry, the units that can defend themselves, but not at this range. He's playing very, very cautiously for this, using the M19 to scatter the locations of these vehicles here. He wants to get the command, because the second he gets that command, the game is over. The uh, self propelled Mistas are firing off on the M19. They, all artillery units have anti-air capacity, just not much, but <laughs> Havoc are trying to spin around, trying to get a shot at this UAZ. And it's a matter of just putting on the finishing moves for Comrade Jesus, who's played a very, very good game. He is one of the players who will make it to at least a round of 300. Whichever round that would be, that would probably be like round 4. And so he will probably do pretty good. He has a pretty good understanding of, of map, troop positions, and um, it, you know how to counter rushes like this. And it's not going to be the people who can create arcs and tactical play the best, it's the people who can deal with the rushes. Because out of the top 1200, I will guarantee you that 400 people will get rushed, and then the next round there will be another 400 people get rushed, and then out of that there will probably be another 100, 200 people will get rushed. The fact that Comrade Jesus has been very, very good at dealing with rush means he probably has a pretty good future. He's pulling back his Havocs, so I'm not entirely sure why, he probably thinks he has more than he actually has. Here comes Chris deploying the anti-aircraft missile. Uh, can he see this? He does in fact see it, and he's going in for a snipe with his BDBs. Pulls it back just in time, so he's going to be his location. The Mistas are draining their resources on trying to get these few BDBs. We have, ooh, we got some Baratino going on. We have a lot of tanks. There's actually no Baratino here, I was wrong. But yeah, we have a lot of tanks, anti-tank weapons, uh, the, the Shuturns. Empty Libu Shaturns are tank destroyers, so they'll do very, very well against pretty much everything here except the Modus Dregals, which don't have the range to really attack. We have a rain of tears of artillery, picking away a few points, but not too many. Oh, here's the Barotino. I was not wrong. There is a TOS-1 Barotino here. Barotinos are rocket propelling units. They have very, very short range, but dear God, do they do a lot of damage, and that finishes the match, people. Comrade Jesus defeats Chris, eliminates him from the tournament. And in fact, moves on to the round of 600, 600 people. It's a long tournament, people.